And it was an institutional community from the very beginning. I think that's often overlooked. Trinity Congregation was here organized in 1868 and three years later was instrumental in bringing Augsburg College here. Ten years later, Riverside Presbyterian Church, now the People Center, was organized as an outreach of, I think, Westminster Presbyterian Church downtown, followed by the hospitals, St. Mary's, then Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church in 19, 1891, and Fairview Hospital, 1908, and now that is Riverside Medical Center. And there was Dania Hall, Scandinavian YMCA, the Pill House, and that's only to name a few. But I think the important thing is to remember that it was institutional as well as residential from the beginning. You know, way back when, I think you would have found an animosity between, for example, the uh, Roman Catholics and, uh, and the Protestants. Well, we wound up spending 20 years sharing facilities. We shared with the Presbyterian Church for a few years until the university took over that building. And then we went into the Catholic Church building for some 20 years. I think uh, we left there in 89 to move over here to Augsburg. But Cedar Riverside is made up of a whole lot of... Uh, uh, groups, you know, you have the elderly, you have the scattered elderly, you have the business community, the entertainment community, the religious community, the academic community, the hospitals, and then you have, I suppose, all of those that are not classified. Originally formed by West Bank residents, Fresh Air Radio has only recently made its home on Cedar Riverside. The station's format reflects the diversity of its surrounding community. January the 19th, give them a call over there. 338, 838, that's their number. Yeah, about a man from Senegal, West Africa on the 19th. Fresh air uh, is part of uh, just about anything that happens here at the West Bank, from the Cedar Fest to, to like we say, any kind of uh, political activity and all that. People come here so that the information can get out. Um, Many ways, many ways, uh, fresh air is part of the, you know, the West Bank scene. And you um, walk down the street right now, yeah. culture and diversity right, standing right, right in the face. You got the Southern Theater up the hill there. What's that other theater right across the freeway over here? Theater in the Round, theater in of the course. Round. And the university got a couple of little theaters over here. Yeah. We got uh, some institutions like the Viking. Anarchists the also live yeah. around here. Oh, all <laughs> kinds of good people live around the West Bank. Uh, Diversity. There it's, you have it's it. very diverse. Very diverse. Well, I don't think it would be the West Bank if it wasn't, you know, culturally diverse. It wouldn't have the kind of reputation that it does have. And um, probably wouldn't draw the kind of people, you know, it does if it wasn't that kind of area. I don't know. People come from every which way to come to the West Bank, it's kind of a place to, to hang out sometimes, you know. And uh, people come from the suburbs and places like that too. Come here. One of the biggest neighborhood festivals happen right here on the oh, West absolutely. Bank. Oh, absolutely. Cedar, Cedar Fest. Fest, yeah. Also full of culture and diversity. Very much so, yeah. It's probably the And most, history too. Yeah, it's probably the most diverse uh, cultural type festival in the Twin Cities. Yeah.
and blues, but as time went by, we had to kind of change our format a little bit to reggae, alternative, light rock, things like that, because of the fact that we draw people from all over the area, not just the West Bank. We draw them from the suburbs, from South Minneapolis, West and East, St. Paul. They come from all over, actually, to listen to the West Bank music. The West Bank has got a reputation for good music, and I think it'll keep it, you know. Uh, it's a diversified area. We have a lot of college students that uh, stop in and listen to the music. We have working people from the suburbs. We have working people from the city of Minneapolis. They all come down to the West Bank because there's so many places on the West Bank that have music. You got Whiskey Junction, you got the Caboose, which is an old timer. You have uh, the Five Corners, you got the 400 is another older one. You got the Viking, they have music. So it, it's pretty much where you can park and you can go to three or four or five different bars and listen to different kinds. There has been a political move there. I, I myself am not that political. I to come to the, to the West Bank because of uh, the culture and diversity. As far as politics go, you know, yeah, well, you it, it's that. around. I'm not, I'm not too political myself, it's, but it's, you, know, it's you can't help but get it. No, you can't help it. If they're doing what we do and all that. But as far are, as yeah. uh, getting deep into it, no, I, I mean, culture and, and, and diversity is more, it's more our thing. It's, you know, education also because of uh, what we do here at Fresher Radio. Uh, we present a number of genres of music and on the international uh, scale and, and uh, hopefully we educate all these people uh, on the music of uh, say Cuba and music of uh, Panama oh, yeah, the and the happenings there something. also which motivate the music you know, we, you know like uh, uh, Trinidad Tobago or wherever you're at uh, yeah. Senegal, African Africa yeah. Yeah. so along with the music we try and educate the folks, the listeners as to you know where the music comes from, who the musicians are, and perhaps what motivated yeah. them to produce this particular music. Fun and information is what it is. Yeah, yeah information, so, yeah. education. And then some of the major uh, problems probably arose. You know, to whom does Cedar Riverside belong? The people who sleep here, the people who work here. I, for example, lived outside the community, but my life and involvement was involved right here. There were very few uh, owner-occupied homes. Most all decisions were made by people who were renters. And that was a time, of course, when there got to be a lot of opposition not only to the high density development, but this was also the time of the uh, 60s and the opposition to the Vietnam War. And I know one of the most memorable experiences was uh, May 9th, 1972, which was the dedication of Cedar Square West. And Secretary Romney had come for that. And uh, just prior to that had been the mining of Haiphong Harbor. And so the whole, not only the West Bank, but the East Camp, East Bank uh, campus erupted in a demonstration and it was hard to decide what was directed against Cedar Square West or high density and what was directed against the uh, the Vietnam War. And that really pulled the community together and, and you know even though it's been years since that happened there's still uh, kind of a community spirit that's unique in any neighborhood probably anywhere because usually that doesn't happen unless there's a war on or something and you know some foreign country is going to take over your town. I guess it, to us it felt like that. And you know even the people that didn't live in the neighborhood that you know came to the cafe and other coffee houses and and things in the neighborhood and went to Dania Hall for dances and things. It was it was kind of a shock to find out that the, these people had secretly bought up everything and were ready to mow everything down and use government money to do it too.
St. Martin's Table was started as a peace education center where people could get the resources, the books, the pamphlets, the um, sometimes we've had globes and um, cassettes and other resources, magazines, um, that would educate people on global awareness. And our servers have been, all these 10 years, volunteers from many uh, walks of life. We've had Augsburg students, the Augsburg professors, uh, many people who have volunteered their time over the noon hour to serve the customers who come. And then all the tips have gone to hunger-related causes. So each year, we have averaged $25,000 in donations to hunger-related groups, which have been um, chosen by the, the servers themselves.